Hello everybody, a long time no see. If you're new here, my name is Jaden. I'm a mom of two. My daughter will be three in August and I just had my son April 14th and so he will be five weeks tomorrow, which is crazy. Um, I'm in my room, I need to fold some laundry. Both the babies are napping and my dog is over here. So if you hear her, I'm sorry. There are like some dogs outside my window and she keeps growling at them and everything else. But anyway, today's video is going to be about my unmedicated birth story with my son. I have one up from my daughter because I also had an unmedicated birth with her. I like to say unmedicated because, um, I mean, every birth I feel like is like natural it's just I feel like people just put um there's just so many different categories so basically unmedicated birth I didn't have an epidural I didn't have any medicine like he came out vaginally with no medicine and that's how it was with my daughter except for I did I did use some a very small dosage of the what is it called um I don't even know what it's called, but the like laughing gas stuff with my daughter, but they didn't offer that this time because of COVID or whatever. But anyway, so yeah, I will fill you all in on how my son's first story went. And I, um, like I said, it's been a while. And so I've missed y'all and I definitely have some content like with newborn, toddler, all that, but I just want to dive in with the birth story and then get this out there for y'all and at the end i'll go grab him so he can i can finally introduce him to my channel um like i said he was born april 14th at 3 52 in the morning and so let's see i'm just gonna kind of go into like the last couple days because um stuff kind of happened and then whatever so thursday the previous thursday before he was born he was born on Oh goodness, what was it? A Wednesday. He was born on a Wednesday. But, um, so the previous Thursday. Okay, so the previous Thursday, I had my doctor appointment. I think I was like, I was almost 39 weeks. And, um, she did a membrane sweep. And at that point, I was already, I think I was dilated to a three. I was dilated to a one at like 36 weeks. And it's crazy how different like every birth story is because with my daughter, I was at like a one and then like I had her like instantly but with him I was at a three for several weeks and nothing happened but um anyway so I had my doctor appointment on a Thursday and she basically told me like she did the membrane sweep and that's what put me into like well I mean it definitely helped I don't know if it like did the entire thing but with my daughter um, she came like two days after my membrane sweep and so she, my doctor did one of those and she's like, okay, like, we'll definitely see you like tonight or tomorrow because I was already dilated to a three and like he was very low. Um, she could like feel his head, all of that. And so I was like, okay, like, wow, time to kick it into gear because at that point, like, I feel like second babies, like I was way more chill. Like I didn't really have anything done <laughs> like hospital bag wise or anything like that because I don't know this baby I was just kind of like I was exhausted from a toddler and I just kind of I was more chill with it and so I was like okay time to kick into gear and my husband's grandparents are the ones who were planning to come and stay with Mavery whenever I went into labor or whatever um, they live about four hours away from us and so I texted them to let them know kind of like what she said and we also had like friends here who were kind of like on guard in case we needed them to come instantly but so we let his grandparents know and so they actually came down the next day and then like at that point it's just kind of like I'm so grateful that they came down but then I just I felt so bad because I'm like everyone's just like waiting on me and I'm just like waiting on myself too but um yeah so needless to say he did not come that night and he did not come the next day and we thought he was coming Sunday, but it was, it must have just been Braxton Hicks. I had, I had a couple different, um, false labor, like, scenarios this time, which was so weird because I didn't have, like, any Braxton Hicks with Mavery or any of that. So, totally different experience, but we actually ended up going into labor and delivery Sunday evening, and they sent us home the next morning, like, 7. So, that was very, like, discouraging because, like, at that point, I, um... 
like I told Mabry by I cried because I thought that was gonna be like the last time like with just her or whatever and then um yeah so we came back home and um I like walked a lot I did like the curb thing bounce on the ball you know all that and so then it would have been Tuesday I had another doctor appointment I think I was like 39 weeks and three days or two days. I think I was 39 in two days. Let's see. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. 39 in two or three days. I don't know. But anyway, so Tuesday morning I had another doctor appointment. Um, I went in and I was still only dilated to a three. But this time she did another membrane sweep. And let me tell you, she, she, got, <laughs> she got up there. Like she definitely... It was way more intense than um, the first one she did for me. And so I had like instant cramping. I had cramping all day. Um, I didn't have as much blood as I did with my daughter. But I think, because I think I've already, like I think I already lost like my mucus plug and some of the bloody show like previously before that. I've been, like I kind of lost it like um, periodically for like the last, from like 38 weeks until like having him. But I definitely, like, I had a little, like, I had more, like, a little more blood. And, but basically, I just cramped and cramped. And then I remember, like, we we went on a walk that night, like, Mavery, my husband, and I. And I just remember, like, I would have to, like, stop. And my husband's like, are you sure, like, these are, like, um, cramps? Like, he's like, um, I don't know about this. But um, I, because we had, like, that false experience already at the hospital I was like oh yeah like you know it's whatever like these definitely aren't contra contractions so we just kept on going and because he actually had a day shift the next morning so he had to be up at six but anyway so we put our daughter to bed and then I decided to go for another walk and by myself and I actually like I called my sister and I well I called my grandma first and I told her I was like I think I'm in labor <laughs> and then I called my sister and so she talked to me because I actually walked like eight miles while I was in labor and it's funny because the night before I had my daughter I walked like eight miles but um but I wasn't in labor then <laughs> but anyway so I, I like talked to my sister like while I was on the walk I think she was like afraid to like hang up because <laughs> she's like oh my lord and I just remember I had to stop like so much and it was like it was dark out because it was probably like um, around nine o'clock nine o'clock ten around there and I remember I'd have to like stop and like moan through these contractions and like there were people like around me and I was like oh my gosh I was telling my sister like they probably literally think I'm like dying right now but um I wanted to labor like at home as much as I could because I remember the experience with Mavery and since I knew I wanted to try for another unmedicated birth I just wanted to attempt the best I could and also at this point I was still kind of like in denial but also like I mean come on like I had a doula friend and well I have a doula friend and I was texting her too and she's like well send me like videos and stuff about like like how painful it is so basically like how I was having to like work through them and at that point I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure like it's happening because they were way more painful than what I felt on Sunday. Like I said, I think I know Sunday that I wasn't in labor. I was just very hopeful. But um, anyway, so yeah, I went on the eight mile walk. They were, they were getting, they were getting up there, but I mean, I made it back home and then I came home and cause I mean at that point they weren't like, I was like dying yet, but like I still had to like stop through and like breathe through them, you know? But, um, so I came home and I took a bath and my husband was sleeping because like I said, he had a day shift the next day and I told him like, oh no, like I'm not in labor. Like I'm not like, it's not going to happen. I'm fine. <laughs> and so, um, he went to bed and then in the bath, even then, like, cause I know baths are supposed to like relax you while you're in labor. And even in there, I was like squeezing the side of the bath and then I was like, oh my gosh, like happen to like really breathe through them like they were they were pretty intense and like I kept getting out and I kept trying to time them but that's just difficult like you're like doing other stuff like you try to like do something else like wash your hair and then like you don't 
time it right and it's just complicated so I try to kind of like mentally do it but um anyway so yeah they were getting way more intense like I was like staring at myself in the mirror like but freaking naked <laughs> because I because I got out of the bath obviously and they were like so painful so I was just like staring at myself in the mirror crying through them and at this point like I came out here and like the um like the labor rage already hit me and so I was like I like yelled at my husband I was like I need you to wake up because I think I'm like dying right now and so he finally woke up and he like he was just like okay like we need to go into the hospital now and I was like no like this isn't happening like I'm not in labor and I was like I don't want to go yet like I want to wait 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 you know whatever and so we um I mean but he was still like okay no like we need to go now because my daughter came very like fairly quickly like I think we got to the hospital at like 4 30 and she came at like 7 50 but anyway so we kind of like took our time like I kind of I got dressed he wouldn't let me put makeup on I don't I don't think I put makeup on maybe a little I don't think so though but I got dressed or whatever um he got his bags together we got everything together we took it out to the car and um I'm trying to remember it's crazy and that's why I wanted to film this now so I could like remember like try to remember every like detail or whatever but um so we got out to the car he went in to the guest room or he like knocked on the door to let his grandparents know we were leaving because it was about it was probably around 12 12 30 at this point and so we headed into the hospital and because of COVID or whatever, we had to go into the ER way and they were like asking me these questions and I was like literally crying. Like I was, <laughs> I was crying in the car and then when we got there, I was like, oh my God, these people are gonna like be staring at me, but like I couldn't help it. And so they wheelchaired me up to the room or whatever. Um, I changed into everything. Um, I changed it to my, I brought a Frida like labor and delivery gown or whatever. So I changed into that and then, um, we went into like the room before you even go to the labor and delivery room basically so they can check you and be like are you actually in labor even though I'm pretty sure they could tell. Um, so they checked me. I was at a 6. I was dilated to a 6 so that was like thank god because like I was at like a 3 that morning. Like obviously something was happening which obviously we already knew but anyway. So I was at a 6 and so it was all kind of like slow like really when we got there like they were they were painful like I mean I was still like it's just it's crazy because they were so painful but you know like if you've ever had like an unmedicated birth you know that like painful and then like when you're like at the end almost ready to push you're like about to freaking die so it's like it's like hard to compare because they were so painful but not like as painful as they got if that makes sense and so then they finally moved us to our labor and delivery room and it was probably like 1 1 30 I don't know and it was just so frustrating like they had me hook up to these like they had me hooked up to like these monitors or whatever like obviously they put like the IV in you and like it was like obviously so late at night um and it was just I don't know like I just wanted to it like I don't know but anyway like the nurses kept coming like in and out and then my doctor did and honestly I just wanted to be like take these monitors off me like and just get out and leave leave me alone so but I did <laughs> I didn't do that but um so anyway and my water still has like my water still didn't break and with my daughter it broke um like in the hospital and so it still didn't break though and um so basically we just labored in the room i kind of like i stood up um and the difference this time was i got really nauseous this time around um i was like shaking hot flashes that stuff i did not experience with my daughter and so there was a couple times while i was laboring where i had to tell my husband like get me the trash can and even after i had him i also like i think one time i got like super sick and i was like give me the trash can like i'm gonna throw up and so i did not experience that with her and then the shakes were insane like i was shaking so bad like i was shaking so bad during um like during and then after i was shaking like that 
probably like afterwards for like five hours it was insane and so i didn't experience that with mary either and also to mention my um, baby was sunny side up and so my friend who's a doula let me know that all the false labors that i was having because they even had shakes during some of those they could have been like real but then he like got like he could have got stuck and so then he wasn't like engaging and that's why it would like stop because he was like i said sunny side up or whatever but anyway and so basically i just kind of labored with my husband you know and felt like i was dying you know all the fun stuff when you have no medicine and you're like you know going through labor because it's not an easy process no matter like how you do it it's not easy um <laughs> you know all the fun stuff like never doing this again like i think i'm gonna die tell my husband like i legit can't do this man like all that fun stuff and then probably around like three um it was it was it was bad <laughs> and but um they checked me like i asked them to check me again and i was at a nine and my water still hasn't broke like it would not break and so i think it was around probably three thirty in the morning and we had my doctor come in and she actually broke my water and then because like I was ready to push like you know that feeling you get um like where you just know you have to push and so I was like I legit have to push like do something and so they brought her in and she broke my water and um because like it like nothing was really progressing but like I like it was like you know that like lightning feeling or whatever when his like when their head is right there you have to push like they want to come out but like nothing's happening and it was just like so much <laughs> pain because with my daughter when I had to push I pushed for like like when I felt like I had to push I was able to and she came out in like five minutes and it, that was that and so anyway my doctor came in and broke my water and then thank god after that like i was able to start pushing and um i had him after like 15 minutes of pushing probably at 352 like i said and so and then right after i actually so i was going to refuse the iv thankfully i didn't because they did they had to hook me up to something because i was losing a ton of blood like the nurse checked me and then my doctor had to come in and check me because I like was having some clotting and stuff but like a ton of blood and so then they ended up also having to give me like cytotech or whatever they literally put a pill up your butt <laughs> and that was after I just had a baby and so I was like okay this is fun I'm like trying to like hold and bond with my baby and like all that fun stuff and then they legit just stick a pill up my butt because like my bleeding won't stop or whatever and so that wasn't a fun experience and like I said I just got super like nauseous and sick the shakes were insane and um but yeah otherwise and then um this time around it was different like pushing my placenta out because I like actually like had to like like I actually felt it and it was like like with my daughter I was able to use like the laughing gas or whatever I don't remember what that's called is that like the tip of my tongue but I I can't remember oxy I don't remember and so I like had like the mask or whatever with the laughing gas with my daughter and so I was able to use that when I was pushing out my placenta so I literally pushed like once and it came out but this time around I actually had to do it like a couple times and I felt it all and I was like oh like I mean it doesn't it's not like painful obviously after you just pushed out a baby but it also wasn't like the best feeling <laughs> and also he was eight pounds and two ounces and 21 in inches long and so he was bigger than my daughter my daughter was 7'3 and everyone was just, just like saying like oh he's a big baby and it's so weird because like when you have a toddler at home like he just looked so tiny to me like he didn't look big at like big to me at all but um yeah so that is my like birth story it's been like 20 minutes but I feel like um I feel like it was just super <laughs> simple of a thing like so, I mean, obviously, like, nothing, like, super, like, bad happened. Like, I'm extremely, extremely grateful that this is my story. And then I'm extremely grateful for my daughter's story. Like, I know some people, like, have just super traumatizing, um, like, scenarios. And, like, that just, like, breaks my heart because I'm, 
like I know that I'm not like lucky but I'm super blessed that these are mine and I had like great nurses both times um, and so I'm just super blessed and obviously um, just I mean I wouldn't say like obviously in the moment they're like my labor like they don't feel quick but like some people have like 20 plus hour labors and so I'm very I'm very grateful <laughs> that my baby's like you know like they don't take 20 plus hours basically and so I'm extremely grateful that these are my stories and that I haven't like had anything like traumatizing like I am very proud of them and obviously um I feel very empowered by my stories too because doing it without any medicine is I honestly don't know it's obviously a personal choice and honestly I couldn't even like the main thing is is I just didn't want the epidural that's why I chose um, to do an unmedicated first of all I, I hate needles and second of all I've like heard some symptoms that you can have from like the epidural or whatever so I basically and I didn't like I wasn't like saying completely no to it like if I needed it like I told my husband like if I absolutely need it like I'm not like against it whatever but I knew with my daughter like I did it with her and so I just I kept reminding myself like I can do this you know like it'll be over and then obviously as soon as they come you're just like so in love like now like I said he's five weeks tomorrow and I'm like give me more <laughs> even though I think he's our last I don't know that's that's the topic for a different video but um yeah it's just it's crazy and it's crazy how fast it's going and that he's finally here because obviously when you're super pregnant you're just like oh my gosh like he's never gonna be here and now he is and he's five weeks and it's just insane my daughter will be three in august like time just flies truly but um yeah so that was my story i'm so glad i finally sat down to film it and then one day i can have it to look back on and i'm just excited that i am finally putting a video out there again for y'all and i would really like to start a schedule soon posting like two to three times a week regularly but i also like i don't know i just want it to stay fun for me but i also want to like i really want to capture these moments in my life right now like where i have a newborn and a toddler like i want to capture these moments um so i can look back on them because i know they're gonna like fly by right before my eyes but anyway i'll let y'all go because i hardly did any of this laundry and i have like another basket because we actually have family coming this weekend um no family has actually met him yet that was a personal choice we kind of wanted to soak it in for just our family for the first couple or for the few, first few weeks and so from now until like mid-june we have um some visitors like i think like for like three weekends or but um so i'm trying to clean up for that and i'm excited for people to meet him even though he's already like a little over 12 pounds now like he's getting so big <laughs> like literally and age wise and so but i'm so excited for them to meet him but I will definitely, maybe my sister and I will film a video for y'all. I think that would be fun. We'll see. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the big thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And there will definitely be more motherhood content. That's basically, I mean, I don't know what I give out here. <laughs> and um, more videos of my sweet baby and my toddler who... She's sweet, but we also we also have our days, you know. And at the end of I I want to, I want you guys to meet him. So he's sleeping now, but I will insert like I will once he wakes up I will um, show him to y'all and not in the video. So I will catch y'all in like a second for you guys. Okay, everyone, meet my newest squish. This is Maxton Jacob Renner. Oh my goodness. And there's my daughter. <laughs> he was born April 14th at 3.52. 8 pounds and 2 ounces. And now he's over 12 pounds. Do you want to say hi? Come here. What is say hi. <laughs> you want to say hi? What? Oh, and this, is my <laughs> and this is my big one. Hi. Say hi. Hi. We are eat pop one. I think she's confused because she's used to like FaceTiming, like family and stuff. Mom, so she's like, 
So she's like, Mom, why are you talking to yourself? Mommy, what's what? it from? What's it come from? It's just a camera. It's a video. So one day you can watch it and see how small you were. Ready? So anyway, this is my little man, Maxton. Say hi. This is our new little guy. Look, buddy. Look. Say hi. Hi. Did you have a good nap? Hi. <laughs> Maybe he's saying hi. Are you saying hi, honey? And so far, he sleeps well through the night. Um, the other day he went to bed, I think at like 11.30 and he woke up around 5.30. So he's been like a good sleeper basically since the day we brought him home from the hospital. So that's been amazing, except for my boobs do not like that with breastfeeding. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to go for a walk. So we will talk to you all later. I just wanted to introduce my little dude. He's, like, he's not about this right now. <laughs> but I just wanted to introduce him. And we will see you in the next video. You say bye? Bye. Say bye. bye. <laughs>